Follow off on the back straightaway right there. Will he jump on to the cinder track? Bigdell slow on a two, but he doesn't take the left turn and go off the speedway. Maybe Bigdell's out there just trying to bring out a caution flag and give himself a shot. It comes out. 21 to go, and we get our fifth caution of the day. Bicknell with that right front tire down. This could be huge for Rick Laubach. He doesn't have to chew up a lot of gas. He can just pace himself around right now, and the fuel mileage will come into play. Or do they know he's going to have to stop as Bicknell comes back to pit road? Does he take the opportunity for a splash of fuel and give up track position here? Boy, that's a tough call. You're out in front, $20,000. That's a big decision. Danny Johnson's crew wondering how this one will play out, but they've got a fast car and a driver who knows how to get the job done at the Moody Mile. Top 10 as we get inside 20 miles to go. Lawbach, Johnson, and Brackman, the first three. Shepard is fifth. We'll be back. Back at the Moody Mile, Syracuse, New York, preparing for a restart. The small block championship part of Super Dirt Week 150 miles laps winding down and Rick Laubach on the point for the restart. I'll show you how we got here. The pole sitter was Pat Ward here in the 42P. And on the very first lap, Matt Shepard took that yellow 44 car around him to lead on the high side. It would be Shepard, Ward, and the 42 of Canadian Pete Bicknell, 1-2-3 for quite a while. 50 laps on the board, second caution. Shepard and the leaders come to pit road. Some elect to stay out. Shepard comes in but takes fuel only. Gambling his tires will hold up for all 150 miles. And then contact with Brett Hearn on pit road. Either car seemingly damaged. Danny Johnson in the 27J gets his service completed. Not too many problems there for the doctor. Once we were back underway, Danny Johnson a rocket on the outside going around Shepard. Roaring into contention, Chad Brackman in that blue and white three car. They elbow their way by Roy Tarbell, who was running second of the 007 down into turn one. Johnson forces the 007 up high. Brackman leans on him and moves into third, and Tarbell has to settle into fourth. And that's how we got to this point, where Pete Bicknell's charge ended with a flat tire. Bicknell did bring out a yellow, and that sets us up for this restart with just a handful of laps to go. Got a white flag in the air here, buddy. In through your nose, out through your mouth for 10 seconds. Michelle Laubach, what the doctor's all about. Rick Laubach out of Quakertown, Pennsylvania, is going to have his hands full as the doctor is ready to operate on the top side of the table. 19 to go at Syracuse. Brackman in that three may have the fastest car in the place, but Laubach holds on to the point. He may have the fastest car, but Danny Johnson will make his car the widest. He will keep Chad Brockman behind him. He knows that the 14 of Rick Laubach is close to running out of fuel. Chad Brockman in third spot there in the three car. Back underway at the Moody Mile. Tarbell back and forth in that 007. He's on that same fuel and tire plan that Lawbach is. They stopped back around the 20th lap. This has allowed the guys that were way behind to catch up now, including Matt Shepard in that 44S, Tim Fuller, and Pat Ward going to work on the top side. Tim Fuller sits sixth. Ward trying to rim ride past him. Come on, come He's got on. Wayne Jelly there, there, too. Stay in there, stay in there, stay in there, stay in there. Still there, still there, still there, still there, still there. Still there, clear, clear, all clear, all clear. Pat Ward hearing from his spotter that he is safely okay, around the 45 of Jelly. Very good job, very good job. down into turn three in fifth position trying to chase down Matt Shepard for four. Pat Ward in his 33rd year of racing. This would be the biggest win of his career if he could bag it here today. But tough company. Matt Shepard pointing at something as he went down the front stretch. Oh, one car in trouble. 
And maybe another car in trouble. We see smoke from a couple of cars. That's Tarbell, who was fourth. That was a nice hand signal to Pat Ward, the car behind Matt Shepard. But how about the communication between the spotters and the drivers here today, Rick? Pat Ward using his spotter to perfection, rim riding to work his way up through the field. Now the top three, still Rick Laubach. Danny Johnson in second, Chad Brackman in third. Laubach hoping for more caution laps so he can try to squeeze home a victory in that 14. This would be the biggest win of his career. Shepard's in trouble. Smoke. Oh. Looks as though the motor in the 44 has given up big time here on the front straightaway. Matt Shepard pulls up out of the groove. The question is, did he put fluid down on the racing surface? The Randy Ross owned GU Hardware Courier Plastic number 44S machine. His day is over. Sixth caution of the day here at the Moody Mile, and that'll produce a bad mood for Matt Shepard and his team as their motor gives up with inhaling distance of the checkered flag. He ran a great race, great strategy, and put himself in position to win a tough break. Now Super Matt will take that car off the racetrack. One more look as he came down the front stretch. That's where we've seen a lot of problems today with the drive lines and the motors right down the front straightaway. Well, that's where you're on the gas as hard as any place around here. You've got it wide open, and sometimes they just don't last. All right, Rick Laubach retains the lead in the 14. Danny Johnson and Chad Brackman, the rest of the top three, under caution, 13 to go. Ward, Fuller, and Jelly are next in line. We welcome you back to the New York State Fairgrounds. There'll be 10 to go when we see the green flag in the ITT Industries. Goulds pumps 150. Rick Laubach still the leader. Can he make it after that lap 20 stop mark? Are these yellows helping you guys? Yeah, they sure are. I think we're going to be okay in fuel to the end. Uh, but we have some competition back there They're on fresher rubber, but uh, we're going to be all right. Has he said anything on the radio? He's driving his wheels off the thing. I think he's a little hungry. I'm not sure. He said something about a sandwich. <laughs> the car's working well. He. Uh, he said it's really smooth and that's what we have to do to finish the race and it seems to be a one groove racetrack now so that's part of our uh, 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 ability to stay in the lead. Laubach trying to win the race of his life. Well, if he holds on for $20,000, I'm sure he's going to buy a lot of people dinner. A nice, <laughs> nice young man out of uh, Quakertown, Pennsylvania, race car driver for a living. He also builds race car bodies, his own business, Lightning Bodies. This would be a big win for him, the biggest of his career. Uh, Rick Laubach in the Alpha Mills 14, rolling the dice. Less than 10 laps to go at the Moody Mile. Danny Johnson and Chad Brackman, the rest of the top three. They have no questions about fuel mileage, at least at this point, and we are back underway. Green in the air, 10 to go. Danny took a look down to the inside. Lombok quickly shut the door. I'm sure they've been telling him, watch him on the high side, though. Keep your eye on the car and fourth, the 42P of pole sitter Pat Ward. He has closed in as well. He's up alongside the three of Brackman now. Ward holding back all his cards early in the race. Now it's go time. He knows it's time to get by Brockman and see if he has anything for the top three. Pat Ward doing a terrific job of that Gypsum Express machine. No change among the top four. Lawbox still out in front. Chad Brockman passed Danny Johnson earlier in this race, and the doctor got back by him. Brockman knows he has the car to be able to get around Johnson, but you know Johnson will do everything he can to keep him behind him. Tim Fuller, Wayne Jelly back there in fifth and sixth. Fuller also on that very early pit stop strategy, trying to stretch the fuel mileage. Now Laubach with a very, very light fuel load stretches it out over Danny Johnson. I would think he'd be really tiptoeing and soft pedaling that thing. Why you when you're out in front on the mile like this, you want to keep it out in front of everybody, but you've got to be conservative. It's a tough line to cross this portion of the race. Look for a moment there like Pat Ward was going to take a run on the outside to try to get by Brackman. Brackman closes the door. Ward drives to the inside. Lawback may have run out of fuel. He slows to the inside. Johnson squirts to the high side. Lawback's day is done with eight laps to go. Sometimes the cards come up all aces. Sometimes they show up jokers. Rick Lawback and his team tried, but they just came up short to the jubilation of Danny Johnson's team. About two gallons short of going all the way. It would have been 130 miles nearly on a tank of fuel. Haven't seen that done. Meantime, the battles for second, Pat Ward, in that red 42P, trying to race his way by Brackman's three car. 
this is hurting Chad Brockman because Pat Ward is putting the pressure on him, so he has to push a little bit harder if he has to conserve his fuel load, but he needs to get up there and challenge Danny Johnson. Well, for Danny Johnson, this is the best news of the day. A battle for second allows him to drive his own race in clean air. Six to go now. Danny Johnson has been following cars all day long. Now he is the race pace setter. As he brings him down the back straightaway, Chad Brockman's going to follow in his tire tracks. Ward is third. He's tried Brockman a couple of times. Don't know if Ward has enough left to at least get second out of this thing. It has been a great battle today. Danny Johnson started pretty deep in the field. He has patiently worked his way to the lead with five laps to go at Syracuse. Starter Matt Burdick showing the field a handful. Danny Johnson has had success here at the mile. He won this race in 94. He won the Ecker 200 in 97. But since then, he has not been to victory lane. Could this be his day? Started ninth here today, and he has patiently worked his way into contention. They played their cards perfectly, stopped back around lap 50. No question about having Having enough fuel to get all the way home. He and Brackman stopped at the same time. The only question now is, is that right rear going to hold the last couple of laps? We see crew chief Mike Burdick talking to Danny Johnson, saying to the doctor, just do it, man, just do it. Danny Johnson wants to be as smooth as he's ever been here at Syracuse to try to get home first in the 27J. Now, Tim Fuller back there lurking fourth in the 19. Remember, he stopped very early with a flat tire. He's done a great job to get back into contention. Does he have enough fuel to get a top five here? He stopped the same time Wabach did. Six off. Good line there, Doc. Keep it up. Spotter telling the doctor Danny Johnson to just keep it up, keep it straight, keep it off the fence with three to go. This is what Syracuse is all about, the final three laps. You, the excitement builds, the nervousness, the tension. You can cut it with a knife, Rick. Chad Brackman closing in just a little bit on Johnson down the backstretch. Ward watching from third. Looks as though his bid to steal second from Brackman is over. Brackman may have a shot. He's going to try to go get Danny Johnson with two to go here. Last weekend, the doctor won the Victoria 200 at the Fulton Speedway. That paid 20000 This could be $40,000 in two weeks for Danny Johnson. And just as we count Pat Ward out, he drives it in deep in turn one and closes right up on Brackman. Brackman's back bumper. They'll see the white flag this time by. All three of these drivers have won here on the mile. Brockman did it in a sportsman. Pat Ward did it on Labor Day in a big block, but he's never won here during Super Dirt Week. Danny Johnson still the leader in that black 27J. Crew rooting him on. There'll be one to go. White flag is in the air. You know Danny Johnson isn't holding anything back now. He did that for 149 laps. Now the doctor's going to put the foot to the floorboard. Trouble for Tim Fuller in the 19 hey, car. Looks like he's run out of fuel. All, have it all, baby. Fuller was fourth. Wayne Jelly moves to fourth now. A couple of turns from home for Danny Johnson. He's got a three-car length lead on Brett. Keep going, baby. Johnson, Frank, Pat Ward, that's how they finish at Syracuse. It's been nine years for Danny Johnson at the New York State Fairgrounds. He is the winner of the ITT Industries Goulds Pump Salute to the Troops 150. Dave Thompson, the owner of that car, picked Danny Johnson to drive midsummer as Chad Brockman offers his congratulations. Thompson's first win on the mile. Mike Burdick as crew chief, his first win on the mile. Danny Johnson, we'll meet him in victory lane when we come back. Rush Hour on Dirt is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. We're ready in advance. Eckert Pharmacy. You'll like what we do for you. Back in Syracuse in Victory Lane after the small block portion of Super Dirt Week. Danny Johnson from ninth on the grid rolls home a winner, a $20,000 smile to Mark Kenyon. Danny Johnson climbing out of the 27J native poker. A lot of sponsorship behind this car. And the crew elated. Emotions ran high. Danny up on the roof. He'll salute the crowd, and they love him here. Danny, unbelievable. It was probably one of the smartest races I've ever seen you drive. Tell me about it. I'm <laughs> just in disbelief. Uh, I didn't think I had the car to win. I knew I, had, I thought I had a car to finish, and then we had oil pressure that was fluctuating, and, and it really had our concern. <laughs> and uh, it's just, I just, I'm surprised we made it to the end, and uh, 
you know, if the car falls off the jack in a pit stop, I mean, just, it's just unbelievable that we get a win after all. all. Tell me about the battle with Chad Brackman, because you guys were going at it hard. You know, you had Brackman on you there. You were trying to get around Law back, and it was just uh, it was a thrill to watch. It, it's tough racing. What happens is, uh, you know, us drivers, we try and conserve our tires, so we slow down a little bit in the corners, and that just creates a, a menace behind you, you know, because everybody's fighting for a position. So, you know, that's, that's what happened. It's just, it was just tough racing. You won this race, what, in 94? This is a lot of momentum going into tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just, I just can't fathom what's going on right now. I mean, we won the Victoria here in Victory Lane now, and a great race car for tomorrow, and Lord knows what will happen. But this is just a pleasure to be here, and uh, i got to thank my team, NativePoker.com, Dave Thompson, and the entire crew for, for giving me this opportunity and uh, being able to capitalize on it. Well, great things happen to great drivers. Danny Johnson in for the win at the Ghouls 150. Two $20,000 races he's won in the last two weeks, 40 grand Dan. And he'll drive for 50,000 in the Eckerd 200. You'll see our coverage of the Big Block Championship later here on Speed. Johnson the winner, Brackman and Ward, Jelly and Kale Robidoux in fifth. Andy Bacchetti comes home in sixth. Behind them, Todd Stone, Gary Edwards. How about Rick Rickner right there in position number 15? Tim Fuller has to settle for 18th after running out of fuel with less than two to go. There's Matt Shepard, 21st. Pete McNell, 23rd after running in the top three. Vic Coffey, 25th. Brett Hearn, a disappointing 29th. Take a look at the final finishers here today on the Moody Mile. Decker, 31st. He was out early. Jeff Marshall comes in to 32nd behind him. Lance Willick's first car out. Car 37 in 37. Well, the runner-up today he put a lot of pressure on Danny Johnson. Chad Brackman, Mark's caught up to him. Chad, second place, heck of a race. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, our original Pete's Logs, number three, Bicknell car was, uh, was awesome. I mean, we got behind early on our pit stop. Pits got kind of congested, but we came back. We... Uh, we changed another tire and uh, just hit it with another splash of fuel just to be safe. And